Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the September 11th Sunrise Unfurling of the National Colors. I'm David Evans, and I have the honor of being today's Master of Ceremonies. Please stand by for the arrival of the official party. At this time, we would like to acknowledge the Deputy Secretary of Defense, the Honorable David L. Norquist, the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Manpower and Reserve Affairs, performing the duties of the Under Secretary of Defense for Personnel and Readiness, the Honorable James N. Stewart, the Deputy Chief Management Officer, Mrs. Lisa W. Hirschman, the Acting Director for Administration and Organizational Policy for the Office of the Chief Management Officer, Mr. Sajil S. Ahmed. The Director of the Pentagon Force Protection Agency, Mr. Jonathan H. Kofer. The Director of Washington Headquarters Services, Mr. Thomas M. Muir. And our many other distinguished guests who have joined us here today. Nineteen years ago, at 1114 on September 11, 2001, President George W. Bush spoke to the nation and said, Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. The victims were in airplanes or in their offices, secretaries, businessmen and women, military and federal workers, moms and dads, friends and neighbors. Thousands of lives were suddenly ended by evil, despicable acts of terror. The picture of airplanes flying into buildings, fires burning, huge structures collapsing, have filled us with disbelief, terrible sadness, and a quiet, unyielding anger. 
These acts of mass murder were intended to frighten our nation into chaos and retreat, but they have failed. Our nation is strong. A great people has been moved to defend a great nation. Terrorist acts can shake the foundations of our biggest buildings, but they cannot touch the foundation of America. These acts shatter steel, but they cannot dent the steel of American resolve. Ladies and gentlemen, please join Chaplain, Pentagon Chaplain Monica Lawson for the invocation. Let us pray. Eternal and most gracious God, we stand on this morning in your presence to honor those who were first responders to the tragedies that took place on this date 18 years ago. We pray, O oh God, for those who served and those who continue to serve, as well as those who made the ultimate sacrifice. We ask, O oh God, that their heroic acts remain as a symbol of patriotism and perseverance for our country. We ask, dear God, that you would bless us and give us a renewed strength to stand for that which is right and remember those whose lives we honor on today. As we unfurl this flag, O oh God, help us to be ever mindful of our pledge to stand together as one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. This we ask in your most holy and precious name. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Lawson. On Tuesday, September 11, 2001, American Airlines Flight 77 crashed into the Pentagon at this spot, claiming the lives of 184 people, 125 in the Pentagon, and 59 aboard the aircraft. We all vividly recall the tragedies of that day. For those of you who are here at the Pentagon, the events will be forever etched in your thoughts and being. This morning's ceremony is dedicated to those who responded to the tragedies of the 9-11 attacks, those who proved themselves heroes that day. Many of you are here, and we thank you all for your actions that day and for your service to the country. That morning, members of the Pentagon's Defense Protective Service responded within moments of the strike. I ask the following gentlemen to step forward and remain in place as their names are called. Decorated for their actions that day with the Secretary of Defense's highest medal for bravery, the Medal for Valor, were Deputy Chief John S. Kennard, PFPA's most decorated officer, Lieutenant David B. Webster, Mr. Abraham Diaz. And Mr. James T. Thomas. Alongside of the Defense Protective Service were members of the Pentagon Building Management Office and the Heating and Refrigeration Plant. Decorated for their actions that day were Medal for Valor recipients, Mr. Timothy M. Breeden, Mr. David Brown, Mr. Robert H. Candido, who is unable to step forward as he is facilitating the unfurling of the colors this morning and Mr. Dennis Smith, who is also facilitating the unfurling. And Mr. Donald Cooney. Thank you, gentlemen. This building, its tenants, and this nation owes you a debt of gratitude. 
These heroes of 9-11 were joined by brave men and women of 43 first responder agencies, some of whom are represented here today. Please join the ranks as we call your agencies. City of Alexandria Sheriff, Arlington Fire Department, Arlington County Police Department, Defense Protective Services, now the Pe Pentagon Force Protection Agency, Fort Myer Emergency Services, Metropolitan Washington Airports Authority Fire and Rescue, Provost Marshal of the Military District of Washington, Virginia State Police, and United States Park Police. If there are any others here today that served as first responders to the Pentagon on September 11, 2001, we invite you to join these ranks now. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the heroes of September 11, 2001. Thank you for your service in 2001 and for being here today. On September 12, 2001, the national colors were unfurled for all to see. The original flag was donated by Army Major General Jim Jackson, then the Military District of Washington commander. He contacted nearby Fort Myer, Virginia, asking for the largest flag they could find. Thus, the U.S. Army Band's garrison flag took its place in history. The flag that day comforted all who saw her and symbolically declared our nation's resolve. General Jackson is here today. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Since that time, the National Colors has been unfurled on the same spot each year at dawn on 9-11 to remind all who attend the memorial ceremonies, those who go into work that morning, Pentagon visitors, and those who pass by on the highway that this building remains strong, this department remains strong, and this nation remains resilient. Today's colors will be unfurled by members of the Washington Headquarters Service's Pentagon Building Management Office. The unfurling will be led by the Deputy Building Manager, Mr. Robert Candido. At this time, we invite all to join us in the singing of the National Anthem as the colors are unfurled.
ladies and gentlemen, the Chief of Pentagon Police, Woodrow G. Kuse. Deputy Secretary Norquist, Mrs. Hirschman, Mr. Stewart, Mr. Ahmed, Mr. Kofer, Mr. Muir. I welcome our senior leadership, distinguished guests, and especially first responders from allied agencies who have joined with us here today. Later this morning, our nation will pause to honor the victims of the September 11th attacks. But here at daybreak, we have paused to honor it and offer our thanks to first responders from allied agencies throughout the national capital region who came to our rescue on that fateful day. Responding to the attack, Pentagon police officers, security specialists from the Defense Protective Service and building maintenance and engineering staff from Washington Headquarters Services were joined by police officers, firefighters, and emergency medical technicians from the, throughout the national capital region. An untold number of military and civilian personnel serving throughout the Pentagon also leapt into action to save lives and mitigate damage that day working alongside our first responders. Secretary Rumsfeld's charge to the force later that day was to remind us that the eyes of the world were upon us, were the most powerful, most iconic symbol of this nation's military might, and we had taken a hit. As the gravity of the attacks unfolded, his message to the world was, it's business as usual here at the Pentagon. The Department of Defense and our nation remain solid, strong, and resilient. So rather than striking the colors, thanks to General Jackson, we unfurled the largest one we could find. When the United States flag was unfurled here on September 12th, just before President Bush's arrival, it served both as a beacon of hope and a symbol of unity in response to the attack against our civilians in New York City, in the skies above Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and here at the Pentagon. Taking that flag as a cue, the largest flags were flown from buildings throughout the nation. Many were illuminated throughout the night. Those flags served as strong reminders that we as a nation were at war and were not going to rest until the tide was turned and we were in pursuit of those who were responsible for the attacks. Here at the Pentagon, a garrison flag measuring a full 20 by 38 feet has been displayed on this date ever since being unfurled at a sunrise event just like today in a very solemn commemoration. We have not forgotten that we are a nation at war. In conflicts both long-term as well as emerging fronts both here and across the globe. For those of us who pass this site today, this flag is, our, is a strong reminder of our resolve and perseverance. It is also a symbol of our joint capabilities as first responders. For those of us who safeguard and maintain this building you remain our closest mission partners, and for that I thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you, Chief. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending today's event. Please remain in place for the departure of the official party, followed by our Medal for Valor recipients.